Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We'll uh, call the meeting to order at 7.08 p.m. Uh, all members of the board are present. And uh, before proceeding with our agenda, I'd just like to ask that we all uh, take a moment uh, and have a moment of silence and reflect on uh, the many, many victims of the tragic events of last week. And I would ask that everybody uh, say a prayer, especially for uh, Sean Collier, uh, his family, uh, who is a Wilmington High School graduate uh, that, as many of you know, lost his life uh, as an MIT police officer last week. Thank you. Uh, we'll begin with the transmitting of Treasury Warrants 41, 41A, 42, and 42A. Do we have a motion? So Second. moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. We don't have any uh, minutes to approve this evening, so we'll move directly to our 7 o'clock appointment, which is with Shelly Newhouse, the Health Director, and Kelly Borer Miller, Senior Director, Field Development Autism Speaks, and it's regarding Autism Awareness Month. Uh, good evening, ladies, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me this evening. I was going to do a lovely presentation for you, but don't worry, I'll make it quicker. Um, really want to just talk to you a little bit about autism and Autism Speaks and what we're doing around the world and in your local community to improve the lives of all who struggle with autism. Um, autism is a neurological disorder that impairs a person's ability to communicate and relate with others. It can be associated with rigid behaviors. Um, some may not be able to communicate verbally. There can be rigid routine, routines. Um, and what we believe at Autism Speaks is that there's a lot of opportunities to improve their lives through advocacy, awareness, family services, and science. So I just want to kind of give you an overview of what we're doing in each of those areas and um, letting you know how you can get involved and some resources that are available here in Wilmington for you. Um, so first, awareness. April is Autism Awareness Month. And it's a very busy month because it's our opportunity to shed a light on autism. Uh, we kick off the month on April 2nd with World Autism Awareness Day. Um, and we do a large lighted up blue campaign. We've actually this year had over 7,000 buildings in over 93 countries participate in our lighted up blue campaign. And this is really exciting because it allows us to put autism in the spotlight and start conversations about it so that our families in the community um, don't feel that they have to hide or um, back away from talking about the challenges that they may face. So awareness is really important to us, um, as is family services, and I'll probably focus more on that. Uh, we have several toolkits that are available online free of charge. Um, we have a 100-day kit that walks parents through the first 100 days following a diagnosis of autism. And this covers things from a glossary of terms because um, as you receive a diagnosis, all of a sudden you have a new vocabulary that you have to learn and people are throwing out terms about different therapies and different behaviors. So it has that, it has how to talk to family members what questions to ask different practitioners. So it's a really great resource to families as they are becoming a part of the autism community. We also have a transition toolkit. This was released two years ago, and I still hear from a lot of parents that it is the hot toolkit out on the market. Um, it is a toolkit guided towards the transition years. So age 13 to 22, at 22 you age out of the school system and there aren't as many supports available. So it's really important to start that transition process early, start talking about um, changes that they may experience in their bodies, um, internet safety, what they might want to do when they leave the high school, um, whether that is a residential program, recreational activities, um, and where will they live. Um, some, many individuals on the autism spectrum will need some kind of supportive housing. So talking about what that might look like for those individuals. 
So we have a lot of toolkits. They're all available on our website, which is autismspeaks.org. And they're free. You can download them. You can print them. You can just refer to them. Uh, another toolkit that I just want to highlight quickly is our school community toolkit. And I think that this is something that anyone, whether you have a personal connection to autism or not, can relate to and find value in. It's about creating acceptance and inclusion in the school systems. So it has modules on how students can be more accepting of people with autism. It has information on how bus drivers and um, cafeteria workers, janitors, every member of the school community can make this school more accepting and um, create a more inclusive environment for our friends and family members with autism. So family services is a really big area for us, and um, we do have packets that are available. Um, Shelly has them, and they have information on all of our different toolkits where you can find them. We also have a resource guide online. Um, if there are any service providers that you know of that aren't on our resource guide, we'd love to put them on there. This is a resource that we want to make available, and again, we do it free of charge because we want to make sure that um, this information is available to people. We also fund science. Um, we're looking into the causes, cures, and potential um, improved treatments for autism spectrum disorders. Science tends to be the area that people are least interested in. So I'll just let you know that there is a wealth of information on our website, which is autismspeaks.org slash science, if that's um, where you're interested. And we have actually the greatest amount of money coming back to our community because of the incredible research institutions that we have here in the greater Boston area. So we're really fortunate to have that. And the fourth part of our mission is advocacy. And we are advocating at the state and federal level for improved um, care, for insurance reform. In August of 2010, Massachusetts became the 23rd state to pass autism insurance reform legislation. And I proudly will tell you that we have the best bill in the country. It doesn't have a cap and it doesn't have restrictions based on age. Um, so we're very fortunate to be in Massachusetts where we do have that available to families. Um, and it's really important because there are a lot of costs associated with the therapies and treatments for autism. And we want to make sure that that's available to everyone. So we'll continue to push forward. Um, and we are working to make sure that that is on um, the national agenda. So we do have a petition that you can sign online so that we can hopefully get an office for autism and so that we can be advocating um, in Washington, DC. So those are the four pillars, or pillars of our mission. And in order to um, fund those, we fundraise. And our number one, um, our signature fundraising campaign is our Walk Now for Autism Speaks. Unlike the information in your packet, our walk is coming up on Sunday, October 6th, not October 2nd. And it's a really special fun day. It's in East um, Boston at Suffolk Downs. It's a one mile loop around the track. And we have a resource fair with, um, this year we're hoping to have probably 50 providers from the greater Boston area. And it's fun. There's bounce houses, face painting, kids activities. It's just a really great celebration of our community and there's no judgment. So it's a nice, safe place for families to come and have a nice day um, and be a part of the community. So um, just wanted to touch on all of that. Again, there's a lot of information available on autismspeaks.org. You're also welcome to contact me. My email is greaterboston at autismspeaks.org um, or contact Shelly. She's got information as well. But just want to thank you all for taking the time um, to participate in the Lighted Up Blue activities throughout the month and for inviting me to be a part of this meeting and speak to you about what we're doing. Very good. Thank, thank you. you. <clears throat> Uh, questions or comments from the board? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a quick comment. Uh, I'm really glad to see the chairman has this part on the agenda, and we can talk about autism. And, and I can honestly share a story because we, we talk about being accepted. I have a son, Christopher, who has been diagnosed with autism. His name is Chris McCoy, and he's uh, 19 years old. He goes to Wilmington High, and I'd like to thank the superintendent. They do an outstanding job with these kids. Not only do they want to be accepted to do what they can, but it really means a lot. And we have high school students here that you work with these kids, and they do have a Best Buddies program, and he always calls me on the set, so, Dad, don't forget, pick me up Best Buddies on a Thursday. Don't forget, he goes, we don't have the gym anymore, you gotta go to the front, so, you know, so he's aware of those things, and it means a lot when you kids, you know, work with these uh, kids with, uh, that are autistic, and I know you guys do, and it really means a lot to parents like us, you know, and we can share more stories and stories, but it's a great program, and like you said, these up until age 22, and 
he has three jobs, if you can believe it. You know, he does really great. But once again, I'd like to thank the superintendent. You guys do an outstanding job. From the bottom of my heart, forget about me being a selectman as a parent. It really means a lot. And it's, you know, and we try to do what we can for our kids. And I have two other children that, you know, they're going to go on and be very productive. And I really believe my son Chris is going to be productive only because of what you folks have been doing. And it really means a lot with you kids in here when you really work with them and accept them and, you know, when you treat them as an equal because it means a lot. You know, and he's a big kid, tall kid. And I said to my son, when he goes to the Burlington Mall, just make sure you're with him. Everyone sees a big, tall kid. But, you know, and he's a little clumsy from time to time. He'll be looking in the window. He'll bump into somebody like we all is right, you know. So, but... It means a lot, and I really appreciate, you know, this opportunity to say thanks, and, you know, and it means a lot. As a dad, I want to say thank you to the kids, being good to those kids. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, too, thank you for getting this on the agenda. I think it's an extremely um, powerful presentation, what you did. This is a lot of information in this book, and I, I hope people take advantage of it, either through Shelley or, or your, um, your email. You mentioned the Light It Up program. Can mm -hmm. you t speak on that a little bit more? Or? Sure. Um, so on April 2nd in particular and throughout the month of April, we ask people to turn their houses blue, to wear blue. Um, can be anything from just putting in one blue light bulb or even we've had websites. So um, WROR, they changed their website blue up until um, last week. And um, just different ways that you can participate. It can even mean if you have a local business, we have puzzle pieces that you can sell for a dollar and put up. Um, the way they do some shamrock campaigns. It's really just, it's a, open to interpretation. It's however you want to celebrate, however you want to participate. Um, and we do have local partners, um, such as Home Depot, who sell blue light bulbs that benefit Autism Speaks. Thank you. I don't know if that's something we could look into as a town. Or, yeah, it, uh, uh, actually, uh, the town manager and the DPW have uh, Take a look at that, and uh, we, we weren't ahead of the curve this year, but we're well ahead of it next year, and we're looking forward to uh, doing a lighted up blue um, uh, campaign, I guess you would say, on the common next next April, so uh, residents can look forward to that. Thank you. Anything down here? I obviously just want to extend a sincere thank you for you being here tonight uh, through Shelley and also through the chairman for having you as a valued uh, guest here tonight to the Board of Selectmen meeting and being with the Wilmington community. Obviously, there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into what you do, and uh, it's very fitting and appropriate, especially with it being Autism Awareness Month that you're here tonight, and you can see uh, the passion and enthusiasm that you're displaying and sharing the information, and I can tell you that uh, the support and the information and the knowledge is truly appreciated. Uh, you know, for someone myself, I, I don't have any children, um, but as a former teacher, I've worked with students and I have connected with parents and families and I have friends and family members that have children that are uh, in the autism spectrum and it truly means a difference and it, it, what you're doing is uniting people and you're, you're helping pr provide a framework for people to communicate and to be able to talk about topics that are difficult. And we're, we're all very common, and we all have a, a human value to us, and we may not be able to speak. Uh, we may not may be more of a listener. Um, and that's really what I've enjoyed most, is, is learning from other people, such as yourself, as to what autism is about and how I can help. Uh, so I want to say thank you to you, and I want to say keep doing what you're doing. Um, there's a definite need for you here in Wilmington. Um, I, I do applaud the efforts that the school department puts into it. Uh, obviously, we always can do more, and I know um, that the school system here in town is committed. I know the, the community here in Wilmington has a very, very big heart. Uh, so thank you for being here, and uh, I look forward to supporting this in the future. So thank you. Great. Thanks. And I just want to add, um, if you have a CPAC or a local organization and you'd like, or a group that you'd like us to come and do a more in-depth presentation and talk more about our toolkits and our research initiatives, um, that is very important to us, is to be able to do that, to provide that to the community. Um, so we're happy to do that, um, as well as meeting with anyone at the school to help do some of the um, awareness programming um, in the school. So. I'll just simply say, I, I haven't had any, uh, any direct first-hand experience uh, with uh, with the condition and um, based on that, you know, up until I guess I became sort of a grown-up, um, it had a, a stigma or a mystification around it, you know, it was something in, in maybe a generation ago that, 
either maybe was misdiagnosed or you just didn't hear an awful lot about. Um, and so I, I con I'll congratulate you in that the awareness efforts that you're making is working. And it's, it, in my mind, it has been demystified and destigmatized now. It's, it's uh, not to say it's accepted, but understood much better now. Um, and uh, so I congratulate you for that and uh, congratulate you and thank you for making me more aware and, and for the, the, the community as a whole. So we'll continue to uh, raise awareness and uh, I, 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 I wish you well in your efforts through the year, not just the, during the, this particular month. And thank you for coming here tonight. Thank you. Um, if anyone's interested, I have packages available tonight or for any information that you might have missed, like contact information, you can come see me at the Board of Health office at any time or the, or the public health nurse and we'll have anything available for anyone that needs it. Okay. And uh, are there any questions or comments from anybody in the audience that before we let these folks go? Okay, we'll see none again. Just all, one quick please do. I just want to share one more personal thing. When my son Chris turned 18, he became a registered voter. He didn't vote for any politician, nor did he vote for his dad. His first vote was for a new high school. I thought I'd like to share that with you guys. That was his first vote. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. I, th I think that's a great ending to our discussion. And, and again, thank you very much for being here. I know Shelly continues to uh, work on this as the, as the point person in the health department in Wilmington. And uh, we really appreciate your time and your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next uh, scheduled agenda item is the recognition of Ryan Clark, and it's regarding the Boston Globe Scholastic Art Award. Uh, is R Ryan, is Ryan here? Did you notify? Know oh yeah. <laughs> well, um, just to uh, take a moment and recognize uh, Ryan, um, we uh, have a, a recognition of his achievement here, which we will uh, certainly connect with Ryan. Uh, and it's in recognition of his achievement in photography as a recipient of the Gold Key Boston Globe Scholastic Art Award and the Silver Medal National Scholastic Art and Writing Award. So uh, certainly a credit to the town and to his school <coughs> and uh, to the community at large and very proud of uh, Ryan's accomplishments and extend a, a heartfelt congratulations. So um, something must have come up with Ryan, but we'll be sure to, uh, to see him soon. Next scheduled appointment, I'd like to uh, just take a, a quick 30-second uh, recess, and then we'll uh, introduce our next uh, agenda item. Like bit anticlimactic, I know. <laughs> but... Uh, if last year's team was good enough for us to uh, do sure. something like this, then this year's team certainly is, is good enough to do that. So, uh, Obviously, we're here uh, at this point in the meeting to recognize the uh, Wilmington High School boys ice hockey team, uh, players and coaches alike. Um, I don't know what else to say other than uh, the toughest thing to be, uh, tougher thing than becoming a champion is repeating as a champion. And uh, really, a, a a heartfelt congratulations from the board and from the town and um, you know we wish you every success going forward uh, and as uh, young athletes and students you know certainly know that um, we may not uh, know as much as you do uh, <laughs> one thing we know is that this won't be the pinnacle of your life or your career so uh, any other questions or comments up here I just you said it all mr. chairman uh, I hope uh, yeah, I'm willing to put the wig on again next year for you guys. You know? <laughs> Us too. That's it. Back to back's pretty cool. But I got to ask you as a question: How do you play hockey with these things on your head? <laughs> Put the helmet over. <laughs> Anything? Congratulations, guys! Back to back. I just want to say congratulations. I mean, I've been to your games. You are such an incredible team to watch um, the camaraderie that exists between all of you you can tell that you're the best of friends you have each other's backs um, I'd spent some time with um, Mark DiGiovanni we were, we were talking about 
the win. And he just said, you know, what a, what a great, great uh, group of young men that you are. Um, I've read all of the publications. I've seen all the interviews. I, I'm assuming that you have a playbook, but I was wondering if you had a glossary of terms because I was, I was asking Mark, I said, you know, what does it mean when Cam Owens says that he did the head fake, then he did the shake and bake, and then he, and then he tossed some cheese and it, the floodgates opened? And he said, that means he scored. And I said, oh, of course that's what it means. So um, you have your own unique team chemistry, and uh, I think it's really, really, really cool. And um, I, I think so highly of the coaching staff. I have um, just really enjoy as a spectator. And I just want to say congratulations to the family and the parents that are here and to the school department. I know that the superintendent's here, the athletic director, um, I know it's a total team effort that goes and extends beyond the ice, and I know a lot of the, the hockey moms, there's, there's no one like a hockey mom, um, that you spend a lot of time going to camps and clinics and 6 a.m. practices, and to come this, this, this far and to do a back-to-back, -back, you know, there is a phrase called a three-peat. I just want to throw that in there. <laughs> so I just want to say congratulations. High school years are the best years of your life. They're one of the best four years of your life, so enjoy it. You deserve it. Congratulations. And... Well done. Thank you. Yeah, Judy, Judy, you always do such a great job. I, everything she said. Um, but but I, I also wanted to pay tribute to the parents and the siblings and, and the grandparents and, and all the folks that have traveled along with you since you were little tiny kids, probably learning how to walk and skate at exactly the same time. Um, so kudos to all of your efforts in, in guiding these great young men uh, to this point. Uh, thank you to the coaches as well. Congratulations to you, uh, you folks as well for your commitment. Um, ultimately, I, I want to encourage you guys, uh, and, and I, I don't have to tell you to do this because you're just going to do it naturally. These are going to be the greatest memories of your life potentially. You're going to carry these memories for the rest of your life um, and just suck the marrow out of those memories uh, later on. Uh, but I also wanted to, th to thank you because you've created those memories for us. Um, we will, in, in years down the line, we will talk about the, your glory days um, with great fondness. So thank you for providing that resource to us and that memory for us. Um, congratulations to the graduating seniors, whoever you are among this crowd, uh, and good luck to you next year. And to those of you that will be back uh, playing next year, I'm thinking purple hair, just throwing that on the grid. What the heck? Uh, congratulations and good luck next season. Have, um, for the players and coaches, a um, uh, I guess a token of of, uh, uh, of our congratulations to you. I did want to specifically recognize Superintendent Benton and Athletic Director Ed Harrison in the back. Um, be and before we introduce uh, the players and the coaches, I just wanted to uh, you know note the fact that they are here and obviously uh, an integral part of the success not only of uh, this program but of uh, the entire athletic uh, program at the at the high school, um, I think that um, the town came up, and, and I don't take credit for it. Um, but Jeff Hull and Bev Dalton and their office, I think, came up with a great idea this year. We have a uh, a flash card uh, that is, uh, I guess, emblazoned on the front with um, the championship photo of the team, and on the back. Um, you know, is, is the fact that in 2013, the Wilmington High School boys ice hockey were the Division II state champions. And we're going to uh, take a few moments to present one of these to each of the players and coaches. And uh, again, congratulations. We'll call, uh, call the players up by class and uh, present these now. Uh, first, uh, from the freshman class, uh, William Falter. Sophomores uh, starting uh, Joseph Castellano. <laughs> Steve DeFurier. Uh, John Galasso.
Michael Marcinkowski. Uh, juniors, uh, Brody Curtis. James Davey. Uh, Drew Foley. Luke Foley. Uh, Brandon McDonough. Cody McGowan. And Austin O'Neill. Seniors uh, starting with Brooke Carter. Uh, Anthony Castellano. Cameron Collins. <laughs> Dylan DiNatella. Uh, Nicholas DiRinzo. Uh, Joseph Giroux. Andrew McDonough. Jacob Rogers. RJ Townsend. And Cam Owens. And Captain Brian Pickett. Coach Mark DiGiovanni. <laughs> Assistant Coach Brian Guthrow. And Coach Steve Scanlon.
And uh, just two things before we let you go. First of all, Bev uh, reminded me that the photo that appears on the front has already been loaded uh, onto these cards, so you should know that. And um, the other thing is uh, if the captains could come forward, I understand that you want a, a moment as well. Um, on behalf of Wilmington High School and the Wilmington High School hockey team, we would like to um, give you the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all, be, all been said. I think it's all been said, but again, uh, congratulations. You've really uh, done yourselves proud and the, and the town very proud. Thank you. Nice job, guys. So, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to know what rock band the two on the end are going to star in. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even look at you. I'm an, I'm an, even though I'm in the 50s, I'm an Aerosmith guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we get down to uh, more serious business again. We can uh, retire these till next year. Thank you again, gentlemen. Um, actually, if we explain that to the wife. We could just take uh, two two minutes here. We'll uh, let these guys head out, and we'll get settled in again. All righty. We'll now proceed to our next agenda item scheduled for 7:40. It's a discussion and assignment of motions for the annual town meeting. Mr. Hull. Okay, for the uh, reading of the motions, I'll just uh, go through them from one on, and then if the board uh, chooses to uh, change this up, we can certainly have that discussion. The first article, uh, town elections, uh, um, Chairman uh, Newhouse. Article two, committee reports, uh, Selectman McCoy. Article three, unpaid bills from previous years, uh, Selectman Semeglia. Article four, uh, authorizing the treasurer to borrow funds, uh, Selectman Shampoo. Uh, article five, which is the uh, omnibus article, is typically read by the uh, finance chairman of the finance committee. Article 6, capital 6A, would be for replacement cruisers, uh, Selectman O'Connell. Uh, 6B, uh, purchase of one ambulance, uh, Selectman, uh, Chairman uh, Newhouse. 6C, the uh, purchase of one one ton cargo van, Selectman McCoy. Purchase of one heavy duty dump truck, uh, that would be uh, Selectman Smeglia. Well, the next one, one uh, pickup truck, purchase of one pickup truck, Selectman Shampoo. <coughs> Purchase of one multi-use tractor. <coughs> see. That would be Selectman O'Connell. The purchase of one skid steer. Selectman Newhouse. Purchase of one student transport van, Selectman McCoy.
Article 7, the preparation of conceptual and schematic design for the former Yentile property, Selectman O'Connell. Article 8, uh, installation of two high efficiency gas boilers at the North Intermediate School, uh, Selectman Shampoo. Article 9, <coughs> supplemental, uh, supplement the prior appropriation for replacement of windows at the North Intermediate School, uh, Selectman O'Connell. Article 10, replacement of a section of the West, Inter West Intermediate School roof, uh, Chairman Newhouse. Article 11, improvement repairs to municipal school facilities, Selectman McCoy. Article 12, improvements to uh, school slash recreational facilities, including replacement of fencing at the North Intermediate School and resealing the tennis and basketball courts at the Shawsheen Elementary School, uh, Selectman Smeglia. Article 13, replace base communication radio uh, for the fire department, Selectman Shampoo. Article 14, replace self-contained breathing apparatus in the fire department, Selectman O'Connell. Article 15, technology improvements including wireless network at the Boutwell, Wildwood, Shasheen, Woburn Street, North Intermediate, West Intermediate Schools, Chairman Newhouse. Article 16, purchase 60 personal computers at the North and West Intermediate Schools, Selectman McCoy. Article 17, technology improvements to the middle school, including replacement of core and intermediate distribution frame switches. Selectman Somalia. Purchase, uh, uh, Article 18, purchase 55 interactive smart boards. Uh, Selectman Shampoo. Article 19, transfer funds from various FY 2013 accounts. Selectman O'Connell. Article 20, uh, the Senior Citizens uh, Tax Workoff Program, Chairman Newhouse. Article 21, uh, appropriation for Memorial and Veterans Day observance, uh, Selectman McCoy. Article 22, Veterans of Foreign Wars Quarters, uh, Selectman Smalga. Article 23, Contamination, I'm sorry, con Continuation of Revolving Fund, Compost Bins and Subsurface Sewer Disposal Upgrade. Uh, this would be Selectman O'Connell. Article 24, uh, is actually a, uh, this is the uh, zoning article regarding uh, a pet care facility. This would be the planning board. Article 25, and amend the inhabitant bylaws. Uh, again, with regard to uh, the pet care facility, this would be Chairman Newhouse. Article 26, amend zoning bylaws and associated zoning maps, uh, rezone from general industrial to general business at the described parcel. This would be a planning board sponsored article. Uh, article 27 is also a planning board article. This is the uh, amending the zoning bylaws with regard to interim regulations for medical marijuana use. Uh, Article 28, amend the inhabitant bylaws, adding section 53 to the chapter 5, criminal history check authorization. This would be 
Selectman McCoy. Uh, the articles uh, proceeding from there are all petition articles. Questions, comments, or suggestions from the board? Anybody looking to make any changes to that? I'm fine, thank you. I, I got confused along the line. 27, the medical marijuana, uh, I believe it is. Yeah, the, the interim uh, regulations. Is that not a Board of Selectmen sponsored uh, motion? On page 18, is that? Uh, uh, where that's a zoning a change to the zoning bylaw that would typically be done by the planning board which is fine it just i think that mm. anything else good all right thank you We could, uh, Mr. Hall, proceed to communications. <clears throat> the first uh, item on communications uh, is a letter from the chairman of the Dudley Board of Selectmen. Uh, it's regarding a proposed change to uh, Chapter 70, which is the a law that governs uh, distribution of aid for education. Essentially, the change, uh, and I'll just read it specifically here, uh, would be preliminary local contributions shall be the municipal, mi municipality's minimum required local <coughs> contribution increased or decreased by municipal revenue growth factor, provided, however, that any contribution over 2.5% shall require an override vote by the town uh, at a ballot election, and if uh, regional districts request an additional contribution over the permitted 2.5 percent, all the municipalities affected by said increase shall be required to vote on the override at a ballot election. Uh, a majority of the municipalities must vote yes for the override to carry. In the event of a tie, the override shall fail. So this is an attempt on the part of the uh, the town of Dudley and uh, pursuing this through their legislative delegation uh, to uh, modify the uh, chapter 70 by reducing uh, or at least reducing the growth uh, in town contribution for education so that it would be capped at two and a half percent in conjunction with the proposition two and a half limitations. The next piece of correspondence is from the Mass Municipal Association, and this uh, correspondence highlights uh, the House Ways and, uh, House Ways and Means Committee uh, bill that was released regarding the fiscal 2014 budget. It provides uh, state aid of various sorts, offers $21.3 million uh, increase in unrestricted general government aid uh, which is the aid that comes back to uh, the cities and towns in, in discretionary form. Uh, would add 110 million to Chapter 70, which is the education funding we just talked about. Uh, increases a special education circuit breaker account uh, to 235 million. The amount uh, had been reduced from 242 million down to 230 million when the governor uh, issued his nine C cuts. Uh, would in increase regional school transportation uh, by a million dollars, uh, going from 44.5 million back to 45.5. That was the 45.5 was the original amount prior to the nine C cuts. Uh, would level fund uh, the McKinney Vento reimbursement at 6.1 million, and would level fund library aid at 16 million. Uh, the uh, essentially the uh, House Ways and Means budget uh, would provide uh, less, uh, some less 
to cities and towns. Uh, from, from our perspective, uh, the town's perspective, that is, the governor's budget does provide uh, slightly more in additional aid than the House budget, but in either case, uh, the amount would be higher than what we have anticipated. So uh, the town would be favorably impacted. Uh, also, just to note that the House budget uh, is proposed at $33.8 billion, as, uh, which is $1 billion lower than the budget proposed by the governor. And the House Ways and Means budget, uh, unlike the governor's budget, uh, provides for f lesser uh, tax increases. The next piece of correspondence is from Senator Tarr's office. This is with regard to announcing uh, preservation grants for Civil War mo uh, monuments and sites. The Massachusetts Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission developed a grant program designed to preserve objects and sites in the Commonwealth that are significant to the history of the Civil War. The program, a partnership of the state's Department of Veterans Services and the Massachusetts Foundation for Humanities and Civil War, Sesquicentennial Commission is open only to Massachusetts municipalities and nonprofit organizations. Uh, the program will provide matching grants up to 50% of a project's total cost, but not exceeding 5,000. Applications are accepted on a rolling basis through May 17th. Uh, we have correspondence from uh, John Arena, who is a selectman in Reading. Uh, this uh, correspondence uh, addresses the uh, hiring process that is in, in process at the moment to replace uh, Vincent Cameron, who is the former general manager at Reading Municipal Light. Uh, shortly after his departure in January, uh, the uh, commissioners of the Reading Municipal Light Company uh, appointed uh, Kevin Sullivan as the interim uh, general manager. Uh, a subsequent vote that was taken in March uh, established a uh, rotating uh, arrangement where uh, I guess several individuals would assume the role of interim general manager. There's been some question as to whether uh, that vote is appropriate and whether it conflicts with the Town of Reading's charter uh, and Selectman Arena is uh, seeking to make the Board of Selectmen aware of this. Uh, I have been in uh, regular contact with George Hooper, who is uh, one of our representatives to the, uh, the uh, Citizens Advisory Board there. In fact, he's on the search committee, so uh, uh, he'll keep me apprised of uh, the developments there. We have a memorandum uh, from me to the board uh, identifying the individuals uh, who are up for reappointment, appointment and reappointment as scheduled. Uh, and the individuals are as follows. Uh, board of Appeals, five-year term to expire, on 2008, expire in 2018, uh, Daniel J. Veerman. Uh, on the Board of Registers, Registrars, a three-year term to expire 2016, Priscilla Ward. Council for the Arts, two-year term to expire in 2015, uh, Linda Malloy. Council for the Arts Advisory Board, one-year term to expire 2014, Jane Crane. Fence Viewers, one-year term to expire 2014, Anthony Pronsky, Jr. and John Spaulding. Uh, town Council, one-year term to expire June 30, 2014. Uh, John Foskett is lead uh, counsel for Deutsch, Williams, Brooks, Dorensis, and Holland. And then for Constables, one-year terms to expire in 2014. Paul Bruce, Jr., Alan Hunter, Charles Rooney, Jr., uh, John Bridges, Jr., Ronald Di Gregorio, uh, Di Giorgio, uh, John Milano, David Muscovitz, William <coughs> Papalesi, John Rio, uh, Rowan, Anthony Saya, and William Zampel, Jr. 
Also, Ellen Davis Sawyer, uh, in conjunction with her duties as animal control officer. Uh, we have uh, correspondence from several individuals uh, with respect to their uh, constable's license, the first being uh, Paul Bruce, Jr. Uh, he writes, I would like to personally thank your office along with the Board of Selectmen for allowing me to serve as a constable for the Town of Wilmington. I am formally requesting that the Board of Selectmen renew my uh, constable license for the 2013-14 year. I thank you in advance for your time and consideration. Uh, the next letter is from Ronald DiGiorgio. Uh, please reappoint me as constable for the town of Wilmington, Mass. I have been a constable in Wilmington since August uh, 26, 1992. Uh, my bond is current and I am still at the same address, 11 Merritt Road, Burlington, Mass. I retired as a Superior Court officer from the Superior Court after 28 years and will be doing constable work full time. I am also bonded as a constable in Medford, Somerville, Woburn, and Cambridge. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, there's a letter from John Rowan. Uh, I wish to apply for reappointment as a constable for the town of Wilmington. I have been a Wilmington constable for over 25 years and wish to continue serving my clients. Uh, my constable fees, although not that much, have always been paid on time as well as my quarterly reporting. My current appointment expires April 30, 2013. Okay, we have um, <clears throat> a memorandum from uh, Sharon George, uh, this uh, town clerk. Uh, she's recommending the approval of an individual to serve as an election worker. Uh, Carol uh, Dreyer of 31 Moore Street. We can take that up under our uh, board to consider items. Um, before moving to the board to consider items, uh, if you could um, uh, let the general public know Mission. about our um, recent correspondence today to MSBA. Yes, uh, this morning, or actually early afternoon, uh, Correspondence was sent to uh, the MSBA, uh, specifically to uh, Mary Pachetti, who is the Director of uh, Capital Planning. Uh, this was in regard to uh, a request from MSBA uh, to respond to correspondence that was sent to her uh, by George Lingenfelter related to the uh, high school and uh, concerns or issues that he raised about the uh, various aspects of the uh, project, including the activities and use limitations uh, designation. Uh, we reviewed the correspondence from MSBA in addition to uh, Mr. Lingenfelter's correspondence and prepared a, an extensive response that I think fully addresses uh, the issues uh, that were presented. The board uh, is in receipt of that correspondence, obviously. Uh, the general public um, can have access to those documents. Uh, I know that uh, it's a fairly lengthy document. Uh, the, the one comment that I would have uh, as it was in response to Mr. Lingenfelter's uh, letter to MSBA uh, is that at our previous meeting, uh, Mr. Lingenfelter, you uh, offered your opinion that the annual report that we generated or that I generated as the chairman was harsh and um, as I read the uh, the letter that you sent to MSBA I can't think of a better adjective uh, than harsh uh, so I just I make that observation um, I think uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that any questions uh, or comments? Uh, you haven't been recognized, Ms. McDonald. That question was for the board. Okay. Uh, 
Mr. Hall, would to consider? Uh, before we get to that, I did have one uh, additional piece of correspondence that came in this afternoon. This is from Leonard uh, Malvone. Uh, it's to the town manager and board of selectmen. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your help and assistance in the unity rally that was held on the common on April 7th. I would also like to personally thank the supervisor of the public buildings, supervisor of the Department of Public Works, and, the, and Chief Bogonis, Chief of the Police Department for the Town of Wilmington. Wilmington can and should be extremely proud of the leadership that you as selectmen and those and these town officials demonstrated in helping myself in organizing that rally and also organizing the vigil that was held on the common for Officer Collier. Uh, with respect to our first board to consider item uh, regarding the collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Wilmington and the New England uh, Police Benevolent Association Local 13 Supervisors Union, uh, I'd ask, uh, as the union has not voted on that matter, uh, for a motion to table. So moved. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? That's unanimous. Mr. Hall. <clears throat> the uh, next item under t uh, board to consider is a recommendation from the town clerk to appoint an additional individual as the uh, as a, an election worker, uh, Carol Dreyer, 31 Moore Street. Do we have a motion on that? I make a motion we appoint um, for the approval of the town clerk to appoint Carol Dreyer to the, as an election worker. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. <clears throat> Uh, we have correspondence from Sandra Curtin, WCTV, uh, regarding another uh, cruising day. WCTV is making another foray into the world of vintage and antique cars. Our cruiser day will take place on WCTV's property on Waltham Street in front of, the, in front of our station. Last year, we were unfortunately rained out. Uh, we have moved our date to a warmer time and hope we will have a, a, lot, uh, a lot full of cars, sun and warm gentle breezes this year. We are seeking your permission to use Waltham Street for the event that will be on Sunday, May 19th from 1 to 4 p.m. We have a number of volunteers who will uh, indicate where the cars and display should be. Uh, we have confirmed Joe Sayers' food truck, the slide from Gentle Giant and photo booth are yet to be confirmed. Also, Steve Jensen will bring a tent and display the chiropractic for chiropractic education. Uh, Brian Moon will have a setup demonstrating child seat safety and the necessity of using seat belts. Our own Lisa Capella will DJ the event. Everyone who brings a car here will display, uh, for display will receive a DVD of the former uh, cruiser days. Hopefully the weather will cooperate uh, with our plans. We are looking forward, to the, uh, for the, looking forward to the public coming to see the cars and our station. Thank you for listening and certainly come to 10 Waltham Street on Sunday, May 19th and join in the cars. Spectacular. Do we have any questions, comments, or a motion? I, uh, I would like to make the motion that we approve the use of uh, Waltham Street for WCTV's Cruiser Day on uh, Sunday, May 19th from 1 to 4. Second. Any recommendation? Um, May and second, a good point. Do we have any objections from any administrative personnel? No. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. No uh, objections from the administrative personnel. Uh, all in favor? Unanimous. Uh, next we have, uh, and I'll just uh, distribute, uh, this is a, a board to consider a hawk and pedal license. And this is for a, an ice cream vehicle, ice cream truck. Uh, the individual that operates it is a Khalid Hasmich, and uh, he has been has received these in the past. In fact, he is uh, at least on uh, several different occasions in recent years uh, been awarded a uh, uh, contract to. Uh, provide the ice cream over at Silver Lake. Uh, Debbie Cipriani, the uh, rec director, goes through a procurement uh, each year 
uh, to hire someone to, uh, to perform that uh, duty. Uh, recommendations, uh, the recommendation I just provided you uh, comes from uh, the police department, uh, obviously given all of the issues that they were dealing with, uh, uh, the chief didn't have an opportunity to provide it on Friday, uh, but just to review upon review, the Wilmington Police Department recommends approval of both the 2013 application for Hawk and Pedal permit and the application for permit to Hawk and Pedal requested by Khalid S. Hazmi, 161 Union Street, Everett, Mass. Uh, the department's review of Mr. Hazmi has determined that there is no evidence to hinder him from being granted uh, the respective permit and license as requested. Uh, the vehicle has also been uh, inspected by the Board of Health. Is he an American citizen? Uh, Mr. McDonald, uh, please don't interrupt. Uh, do we have any questions, comments from the board? Do we have a motion? So move to grant the license. Second. Motion to grant the license. Uh, it's been seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, there's a request from the Wilmington Band parents. Uh, this is uh, came in last week. Uh, the Wilmington Band parents and friends request permission to sell coffee, popcorn, donuts, cold drinks, and balloons in front of the Roman House during this year's Memorial Day parade. Uh, we will obtain the necessary permits and uh, permits required from the Wilmington Board of Health. Uh, if you need additional information, please contact me at my home address. Uh, and this is uh, sent from Patricia Romano, Vice President of the Wilmington Band Parents and Friends. Any questions, comments, or a motion? They've been um, doing that for many years, I believe. And yes. I'll make the motion that we granted this year. Second. Made and seconded. Anything further? All in favor? Unanimous. That does it, Mr. Hall? Yes. Uh, public comments. Uh, Mr. McDonald, uh, I'm not going to recognize you. Please have a seat. Um, any other public comments? Okay. New business or committee reports? New business or committee reports? Yes, Mr. Bodner. Check out the voting machines today, and were there any problems detected with them, Mr. Hall? Uh, yes, in fact, as a matter of uh, course, the town clerk did uh, check out the voting ma machines uh, as a preparation <coughs> part of the preparation process for the elections. Uh, there was one voting machine that. Mr. McDonald, please put the sign down. Uh, Mr. Bodner is being addressed by the board. Please put the sign down. It's, it's interrupting. You've interrupted four times. Now I've asked you to stop. The next time I'll ask you to withdraw from the, me the meeting. Pardon the interruption, Mr. Uh, in going through the process of checking the machines out, uh, there was uh, a problem with one machine. Uh, it's believed uh, that the issue involved the uh, programming uh, card that goes into the machine. Uh, the town clerk has already contacted the vendor and a card is being express uh, mailed to us uh, should arrive tomorrow. This is a part, this is a normal part of the process. Obviously you want to check these things out before the election to uh, identify any issues that might uh, arise and unfortunately in this case one of the uh, machines did have an issue. Is that they are responsibility to maintain or uh, they are the town's responsibility to maintain uh, it's unclear exactly why it was defective but clearly the reason we go through this process is to identify a problem before election day okay. Thank you. do you have any more questions uh, new business or commit mr. McDonald please withdraw from the meeting We'll uh, important dates? We'll wait.
do new business committee reports and then dates. Uh, any committee reports, new business from the board? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for this agenda today. It was um, tonight. It was very interesting. Um, some, some good information about autism. A little fun with the uh, the hockey team. Um, the the events of this past week have affected so many people in so many different ways, and. I just want to say it, it makes me proud to be an American, and it makes me proud to be a resident of this town. Something happens like that, a, a, an attack like that, that happened this week and what transpired, transpired during the whole week was just an amazing event that we all went through. And Wilmington stepped up and we showed an unbelievable show of support for a family that tragically lost a young man senselessly. And again, it makes me proud to be an American the way that we, as, as citizens, handled it between the chief of police, I know he was down there most of the week, and some of his NEMLAC crew, to all the policemen, to all the EMS, all the people. They do what they do. The military does what they do, so hopefully we don't have to go through this here in our, in our country, but we did. And I'm extremely proud to say that I'm an American and say that I'm from Wilmington, Mass., and if, that, if this is my free speech, it's my free speech. And, and Mr. Chairman, again, thank you for the way you handled the individual tonight that continually hides under the guise of free speech and makes a joke and a mockery of these meetings. That's so insignificant is what has happened this past week. And I appreciate your, the way you've handled it in the past and tonight. And again, thank you for, uh, for the agenda tonight. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just echo what uh, Lou had to say. I won't have to touch anything I'm more on that. I just want to say that. I know we won't be meeting until the next election, and uh, I don't see a reason why you two gentlemen won't be coming back here again. I think we agree to disagree. I think you guys have done a good job, and I think the uh, choice is clear, and uh, I wish you guys both the best of luck, and I don't think you need any luck, but I think you guys will be fine, and uh, we're better for it. Thank you. Anything down here? I uh, just wanted to say, um, Thank you to Selectman Samaglia for those points. I, um, I'll be honest with you, I'm still having a difficult time really articulating my feelings in a succinct manner as to what the last week um, has meant to me and, and to those around me. But I just want to say that I'm um, very pleased to see that we have united as a town, um, as a state, as a country, in, in many instances as a world, um, with against what has happened here. Um, I wanted to commend uh, Chief Bagonis and also uh, Town Manager Hull and all of our legislative delegation, uh, all of the selectmen here, uh, the town as a whole. I, I, I'm sure I'm going to miss someone, but police, fire, first responders, DPW, you name it, for rallying that uh, vigil for the Collier family. And that was done with with no real time to plan it and i know that jeff you spent most of the day with the chief and with various town personnel to pull that together and i know um, from a speaking engagement standpoint um, this is one that you just never hope that you ever get invited to attend and um, i just wanted to commend both of you for uh, stepping up with the chief um, i have a tremendous amount of respect for for the calling that you all have everybody has a purpose in life and everyone has a job to do and I was extremely proud of the chief I was extremely proud of the town manager I was extremely proud of this town as a community and I was particularly pleased with both of you for having no time to prepare words to speak that night and I think um, you, your words were poignant I think that they were very appropriate and I think that they were the proudest reflection of what this town has to offer and um, how it supports people in the time of need. Um, I thought it was really important that the chief, in closing, had talked about unity and had talked about um, trying to focus on the good and not on the evil and to not part from that event uh, in anger. And I think uh, there were a lot of children there. And, um, you know, as an adult, I'm having a difficult time. And, you know, I'm particularly concerned about our youth and children being able to. Uh, reconcile this as well. I don't know um, that there's anything immediate that can really be said. Um, but I just want to say that I'm, I'm thinking of everyone and I'm thinking of all the Wilmington people that were there. There were a lot of uh, police and first responders and people that were running that day and um, that were right there in Boston. So um, 
I'll, I'll just close with that. And I just wanted to say, um, uh, you said that we were Boston strong, but that night you said that we're Collier strong, and, and that really is true. So thank you. Yeah, um, again, well said, uh, all of you. Um, I, hope, uh, I hope we never get, as a society, I hope we never get complacent or blasé about these kind of events. It seems like this kind of horror has been happening with greater frequency over the course of the last several years. Um, and the response to each of them, and this one especially, um, has been appropriate, um, has been large and uh, moving. And I think that's important that, God forbid, we have to respond again. Um, I hope we never get to a point where it's uh, treated as just an, just another one of those horrible shootings. Uh, that that every one of the every time something horrible like this happens, uh, a response like what we experienced, uh, what happened in Wilmington on Saturday night, um, ought to happen to bring us together, uh, to bring us peace. Um, and uh, Chief Bogonis, who said said it so eloquently uh, about a random acts of kindness of viral uh, and and paying it forward and. Uh, don't walk away angry. Uh, walk away with love. Um, I, I, I too wanted to uh, express how proud I felt. It was, it's a conflicted emotion. I, you almost feel guilty feeling so happy and so proud of your town at a time of such somber um, reflection. Um, there's so much sorrow and pain that we're all feeling, especially uh, the family of the Colliers and all the others affected. But at the same time, that you're feeling that pain, you look out over the town common and see, I don't even know what the estimate of people was, but it felt like thousands to me anyway, had to be close to a thousand people, uh, all holding candles, all silent uh, in there, listening to the eloquent words of uh, you gentlemen and, and all the speakers, every speaker that went up there, um, no one repeated themselves. They were uh, poignant words, well said, well thought out, um, and well received by the, by the crowd that was there. Um, I want to pay particular tribute and thanks to Chief Bagonis and Chief Bradbury for their entire staffs, uh, for what they did uh, to Building Superintendent George Hooper and DPW Superintendent Don Onesite and, uh, and, and Judy, like you said, I know I'm leaving off people um, who are uh, incredibly involved in the entire day, Saturday, and Jeff, especially to you, because ultimately the buck stops with you. and, and uh, uh, rallying the troops that were needed to be rallied to get all of that to happen in such a ridiculously short period of time and make it look like it's something that has been planned for months uh, was remarkable. And it showed off what Wilmington truly is um, and how much we value uh, our veterans and our service people. Um, and uh, it, it, I was very proud to be from Wilmington on that day. Um, the healing began, I think, for many people, and I hope the healing began for the Colliers um, on Saturday evening, uh, due in large part to the efforts of all of those town employees and all of the good folks from Wilmington that came out and participated in that event. So I thank all of the folks that were there uh, and even those folks that were there in spirit, if not present. So again, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Chief. Um, and thank you, Wilmington. Dad, I, I think... Um I think the board has said it and said it very, very well. And uh, I just simply note that I couldn't agree more in, in um, uh, how I felt about the town on Saturday night. So, and I would just add, you know, it's, it's certainly been uh, reflected here by the comments of the board, but in particular, uh, the police chief. Uh, I mean, he literally had just. Uh, come back from Boston and all, being on high alert for uh, all that time, uh, I'm sure was running on fumes and, and literally being uh, in the conference room there, it was like uh, Command Central as he was getting the various uh, pieces in place, uh, calling on his contacts to assist in putting things together. Um, it was really, uh, he, was, he was the one who really orchestrated uh, all of what went on uh, Saturday night. Chief, you weren't in the room when I said my comments, but I, from from the bottom of my heart, every one of you guys that were down there, that was it was a war zone. And what happened out there, and I know you spent a lot of time down there, and like 
Uh, Mr. Hull just said you come up here and, and helped us with, uh, set up uh, Saturday night. But what you guys went through down there was, was a war zone. And my hat off to you guys and all your Nemlock guys that were down there and um, to, to everybody that was down there in uniform. And, and I, like I said, you weren't in the room when I made my comments, but I want to make sure that I, I publicly thank you and uh, for wearing that uniform every day. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Hull, important dates. Uh, April 24th, uh, brush drop off Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also on April 24th, recreation playground registration begins. April 25th, the Wilmington High School groundbreaking ceremony, uh, the town common at noon. April 27th, brush drop off Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. April 27th, National Drug Take Back Day, public safety building, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Just by way of note, uh, we do have a kiosk at the public safety building, <clears throat> building on a regular basis, so uh, this is the particular designated day, but uh, people may uh, go there on other dates. Uh, the April 28th Wil Women of Wilmington Charitable Run Walk for Wilmington. April 30th is the special state primary and annual town election. Polls open at 7 a.m. and will close at 8 p.m. May 1st is another brush drop off Old Main Street, 8, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. May 4th is the annual town meeting, middle school auditorium. We'll be changing it this year again. That's the middle school auditorium beginning at 1030. Uh, May 4th also is a brush drop off date, Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. May 5th is the Middlesex Canal Commission Spring Walk, <clears throat> Town Park at 1 p.m. And then May 6th through the 10th is curbside collection of yard waste. May 10th is the Good Guy Award Dinner. Uh, May 11th is the Household Hazardous Waste Day, West Intermediate, Intermediate School Parking Lot, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. May 13th is the next Board of Selectmen's meeting, Town Hall Auditorium at 7 p.m. And then May 16th is the next Yentile Farm Development Committee meeting. Uh, that's uh, in room nine at 7.30 p.m. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous.